Good afternoon, fellas. Peggy Day here. Okay, guys, this is video three from a 1959 86 Sky Raider by Ravel, scale 140. Got it done, fellas. I finished up last night. And uh, I wasn't making a video last night, but I was too plumb tired, so I said, well, hell, I'll let it wait till uh, in the morning. And so here it is, the afternoon. And uh, <coughs> beginning of an evening. Okay, I got it all done, guys. And uh, so, I just built it right out of the box. It does everything like it says on the box, but fly. And I got it right now with her, um, her it with the wings folded and the engine cowling is on. And uh, I'll go ahead and uh, take off the uh, prop and everything and move the cowling to reveal the engine. And uh, reveal the bill. This is the final reveal. Okay, guys, they we've got one of these in your stash. They're a good kit, guys, you know. I mean, they're, they're fun, and they bring back a lot of memories, you know. And they, uh, they may not stand up too well, up, up to a trumpeter or a 132nd scale one or Hasagal, whatever's out there, they make of these things. And different technology back in those days, guys. You know, they everything was designed on on rules, taking dimensions from blueprints, making the models. Nowadays, everything's on computer, so we don't have that back in those days. Everything was old school, and I like old school. Anyway, this airplane here is old school, like me, and uh, deserves a look once in a while. A novice can be able to handle this quite well in building this kit. It seems to present no no problems at all. It, it, hardly no fit issues at all in this thing. It just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. And uh, maybe perhaps someday the good folks at Ravel will be able to get their hands on this kit again and, and uh, bring it out again. That would be really nice. And uh, they may. They seem like me to drag something else out of the closet that's been laying around for 50 years or so. So they may have bring this out as a surprise, but if you get one of these guys, it's a good kit, it goes get it very well. Okay, enough chatter right now. I'm going to come over and take a look at the able dog. I got it sitting here on her makeshift uh, asphalt uh, tarmac, whatever you call it. I made right here. And uh, there she is right there. We can go in a little more. And uh, there we go, guys. Gee, folks, it's awful hard to judge everything between the small monitor on this camera I have here. So we'll just we'll walk around right here. I got the crew figures all painted up in appropriate colors. You got the aviation bosun's mate. You got the ordnance out here. And also you've got your... Uh, Aviation machinist mate too out there checking, making sure that the engine's okay and fine. And you got your boats mate, Nordens, there's your Nordens right there in the yellow shirts. This thing really, uh, it's a beautiful airplane, guys. Wings, they come down, they fold, they come back up. Landing gear falls, as I demonstrated on the last video. Dive brakes work. Elevators work. Everything works. This thing does everything but fly. And we get a little closer. So I think Panzerville would like to see uh, see his buddy back there somewhere. There he is. Right back there. He's in the orange uh, jump jump flight suit they used back in those days. Uh, yellow orange, yellow orange, international orange. Uh, that's what they use. I'm going to have the rockets off this thing, guys. I don't like it too cluttered with ordnance. In Vietnam, they carried mostly uh, fuel tanks anyway, full of napalm. They use that a lot to uh, against the NVA. This is one kind of an airplane, guys. You'll never find anyone in the world that can do what this airplane does as a gimmick model. 
I mean, let me tell you guys, this is a very beautiful airplane. I really enjoy it. And it really demonstrates the features of it, you know, which is really, really neat. It's not highly recommended as a toy to play with 24 hours a day because something's going to break. But once in a while, you can amuse your friends, take it to a hobby show and show the features. And some guys say, oh, yeah, I built one of those one time ago. Couldn't get the darn thing to work. So you can demonstrate your model and show how things work. Okay, guys, right here, we're going to take the prop off. If I can find a hole. There it is. It took the cowling off, guys. Okay, we'll zoom a little bit more of the engine. The engine, they give you a wonderful right cyclone 2800 horsepower motor in this thing. This thing is really loaded. For its day, this thing was very, very highly detailed, as you can see right here. It was, uh, you couldn't keep these things on hobby shops. <coughs> Every time you go to the hobby shop to buy one of these fellas, it's gone. I went to uh, Don Baker, who's owned Cozy's Hobby Shop. And uh, I guess. I came up to him one time and said, God, hey, Don, you got any more 86 Sky Raiders back there? No, Frank, I sold the last two today. I says, man, I, says, I can't keep the damn things on the shelf. When are you going to get any more coming in? I got two more coming in next week. I said, won't you order me three of them just for me and, and put a bunch more on the shelf? I'm gonna, I guarantee they'd be gone. He said, okay. So he did. He ordered me three of them. That's nine dollars for three 80 Sky Raiders like this. And I, I bought them off of him. And I got them in my, in my stash. So this is a very pleasant airplane to build. It's it's a beautiful airplane. It's old, but it needs to be respected too as an old school airplane and how it holds up its beauty in all those years. And um, it's a beautiful airplane. Uh, and I've always uh, always loved the AD. Well, I was on the Oriskany and also the uh, Coral Sea. We had a lot of ADs on there. And uh, there, at the time, uh, I would say probably as late as 1966, 66, about 66 or 67, somewhere around those two years right there. I'd say around 66, they, they, they did away with uh, shipboard Sky Raiders and they started moving into scooters, the A4D Skyhawks. They were, they, were the, they were the successor to the ADs because the ADs were getting aging, so. They wanted to be able to use them more, so what they, had, what they did, fellas, they went ahead and gave them to the uh, South Viet Cong, South Vietnamese Air Force. And they didn't know they regarded as Spads or Sandys. And uh, they were, <laughs> those little guys are so small, you had to put a goddamn parachute sack, a parachute uh, kit, you know, behind his back and scoot him up forward so he can get his, so they could put his feet on the other pedals. And uh, so, so what they did, they they had a lot of it was like all airplanes during during a, a, a campaign an event. They always had mechanics out there that always modified things and added and they retrofitted to uh, to airplanes. So they had so what they did with Sandys, they they made the seats. They 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 took out the old seats, made cuts the made seats for the South Vietnamese Air Force so they can be able to uh, uh, fly the airplanes over there because they they were short. And they, they weren't big like us, you know, and uh, they couldn't reach the rudder pedals. So by scooting up forward more, they can be able to have a, they can be able to get to the rudder pedals up more. So a lot of the seats were actually, retro, new seats retrofitted to the uh, Sandys. And boy, them things really scream when they come by. They, and a good, good dive, they can go a little over 400 miles an hour. And uh, they're pretty fast. And they're strong, and they can take a beating and come back for more. Very versatile. The AD is supposed to be the uh, successor to the um, 
SB2C Helldiver. <coughs> but they found out they um, they found out that they were obsolete uh, and when the war came to an end there was no need to, uh, to use um, hell divers and also no, more, no longer to use these ADs. So Douglas Aircraft Company was stuck with a bunch of ADs and so of course the facilities started to heat up in Korea that's when they first got involved in the Korean War campaign they were painted all blue and most influential Essex class carriers, the Shanger Laws, that we had after World War II. A lot of, a lot of the stuff in the Korean War was, uh, was World War II vintage uh, equipment that we had. That's all it was, the technology we had. So we had to make use of best of what we had best to use. And the ADs were proving themselves a very successful piston uh, powered airplane. And they they went ahead and uh, used them all the way up to night till. Uh, at least uh, the, the late 1960s, and the other air forces used them up to the late 1980s, and um, so the Navy, the ADs were actually by 1973, the ADs were, and I say Navy were actually were uh, stricken from the Naval Register as obsolete aircraft, and I guess the, the Air Force Skyhawk, which is a scooter, more or less. Uh, was the successor to this air aircraft, but the AD Sky Reader was one hell of an airplane for its day. It can deliver. Okay, you gotta excuse my tone of voice, fellas. I went down to the VA and checked out with shaking my head. I got sinus infection going on. Ohio is the most greatest foulest state there is in the union when it comes to sinuses. And I tell you one thing, guys. Those sinuses make you feel like you got colds, but you don't. They just drains the back of your throat. You're constantly, constantly coughing. And uh, so I went down and got some pills from the shaker mechanic down at the VA. And so I got squared away there, so I'll be up to snuff pretty soon. I feel good. And just that there's darn hacking, hacking this darn phlegm from my throat all the time from the sinuses. It's really a, it's really a drag. Okay, guys, uh, next video we have is going to be video number two on the yacht Atlantic that I've been doing. The AD's done. I'm going to go ahead and pop the cowing back on, snap the prop on back on, put this back in the box that I made, batten her up, run her down there to the Bosa locker down below, and uh, turn two on the uh, ITT, ITC Yacht America, Yacht Atlantic, that is. Why I keep saying the America, I don't know. Month got the America on my mind, and also I'll be on the uh, the tippy too. So tomorrow I'm gonna spend a great deal all day long on the tippy. I'm gonna have the whole thing joined together. Now let's go ahead and work on the rest of the parts and get this thing probably next probably next week. I'll probably have that thing all primed ready for final painting. And the hard part's done. All the innards, all the lajeras and the engines, the undercarriage, spars, ammo bays. And instantly, I'm going to have the ammo bays in an open, open position so you can be able to see um, uh, see the ammunition in there. Because I like, I like to reveal that as much as possible of everything, you know. Leave the engine panels off so you can see that massive engine that the, uh, that the Typhoon used. And, uh, well, that thing was, that's one heavy airplane model. I'll tell you one thing, guys, that's a heavy model. The B-29 was heavy. But that tip, he's heavy. My biggest scare is the, is the undercarriage. I hope it's be able to be strong enough to uh, hold the weight of that thing without something snapping and breaking. So I'll maybe engineer some tubing or something I might be using. Uh, I don't know. When I come to that bridge, I'll make a decision what I'll be doing. So uh, that's distance from now of what I got to do on it. So I have uh, a tippy video coming up this week too. I'll we'll probably have it by Thursday. Yeah. Thursday I have another video on the tippy. And some pictures we posted uh, on Mr. Martin Lamont's Facebook page on the on the uh, uh, Snippy Tippy group build, and uh, still going strong. So right now I'm gonna jump on the Atlantic. I'm gonna put the AD away and get her put away out of harm's way so she'll get broken. And uh, I should have a video of the um, of the Atlantic by tomorrow. Another one. So right now I gotta finish up the deck fittings, put the boat davits on there and get the boots all painted up and everything and detailed. 
and it'll step up the mass. And it's going to be a fast build in this one. It'll take money. It ain't much to rig up a darn a, a yacht. And uh, especially with a with a gaff rig, you don't take that much. Gaff rigs are very simple to rig. But it's just a beautiful, graceful model. She is a low one at that. Okay, guys, it's time for you to get out of here right now. So tomorrow, stay tuned for the uh, Yacht Atlantic. Maybe video number two for her. And um, that'll be it. And, oh, yeah, I might make a special video that I call Builds of the Past. I'm going to bring out Builds of the Past. Keep you guys going. A lot of you fellas out there like that, and I'd like to do it too. So stay tuned for that. I'll bring out a special guest tonight for the uh, Builds of the Past. Okay, make Mama happy as always. God bless you guys. Take care of yourselves. Happy modeling. And uh, please subscribe. And uh, thank you very much for your wonderful comments, everybody. Uh, I'm very honored each one of you guys out there. And you got a great bunch of fellows out there. Okay, I'm out of here, boys. Take care, gentlemen.